Okay. So looking at your scans, we did three scans, one with your nodes plugged, one you did with your black theater, one you did after carbohydrate healer. So our scoring is based on concussion versus normal brains. If you look at the first scan, this is the one where you had your nose plugged. Based on the score, if we didn't know you had your nose plugged, we would come in as a patient in our clinic. We would say you do have a hepatic had a concussion in your past. We're looking at these different functions and these tests. And so what we're seeing here in these red areas is that these tests is identification, name retrieval. The logical loop is, is, a, is a way of remembering a thing. So we say in your head, dog, cat, house, building, and building up a, a loop of memorized words or objects. That's what that would be. All these things are not necessarily a score of how well you did on the test. They're how hard your brain was, was working to perform the task. How hard my brain was working yeah, to form the make test. It happen. Yeah. So you were in a scanner, you were seeing pictures of different objects or animals, and you're memorizing them and creating a list in your head. And, and, I, and I may have had a correct result or an incorrect result. That doesn't necessarily doesn't matter. That's matter for us. What this will tell us is that over the course of a day, because these are out tasks that your, your brain you do all day long, there's just a source of high level of stress and fatigue over the course of a day. If your brain is working this hard just to make this task happen so with memory tasks, with re re retrieval, with diverted thinking, by the end of the day, you would be exhausted. By the end of the day, you would be probably brain foggy, exhausted, high stress, all these things too. So that's what we see in their patients when they have these kind of scores. This is just to tell us how bad they are cognitively. It tells us how hard their brain is working to get through the day. And right. the reason why they have all the senses they have. I'll scroll down a bit here. This is each task, each system that we look at. Mm. So for those tasks, we want you to be, for the brain regions up here at the top, we want you to be in the screen area. That means the, 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 the brain regions are functioning normally. And this middle section is all the connections between the two the regions that make the task happen. If you had a lot of hypoactivity in a lot of your brain regions, in the blue area, cold, underactive. Mm -hmm. As I scroll down here, it's a lot more underactivity in some of these tasks that we do all day, every day. Even more so down through here. So a lot of these regions and communication was very underactive, under-functioning. Yeah. During that test, while you had your nose plugged. So not so under functioning in the sense that we would probably say you would you possibly had a concussion. <laughs> your brain was not functioning very efficiently during that task while you're breathing way through your nose plugged. Yeah. And then if we go down to the final kind of grid we have for the testing, I can show you how the brain looks. So these are the brain regions where there's a lot of blue which is activation or activity on both sides of your brain, actually. And a lot of these blue or connectivity connections were also either underworking or the red is overworking too much. There's a lot of blue and red in this middle section. So blue, underworking. Red, overworking. overworking. Yeah. So think of a hot, cold. Too hot, too cold. We want to be right in the middle. Uh, right. So while you had your nose plugged, your brain was working as hard as somebody who had a concussion. When my nose was plugged, my brain was working as hard as someone who had had a concussion. Correct. Yes. That's profound. And interestingly, too, we talked about the um, effects of, of that we got this, like they got through COVID. And long COVID has been a thing about COVID affects breathing. And we're actually seeing patients in our clinic that have similar scans from long COVID as well. So again, breathing can affect the brain in a way that's almost creates a metabolic energy crisis that could get caution. A person with long COVID would get a similar brain scan. Yeah, as we've seen multiple long COVID brain scans similar to what you have here as well. Okay. Worse. And so we can say that these breathing challenges had the potential to create a metabolic energy crisis in your brain that's similar to what a concussion would. Yeah. So. Shall we move on to the move next? On. Yes, the Black Sanders score now is a much cleaner score. 
Everything yeah. is in the green. This is what we would see in, in, in anybody that comes to their clinic that has like, had a concussion. We would may see a couple areas that aren't as amazing or ideal. That's mm. part of being human. But in general, everything is working well in the green, which is pretty fantastic in, in two ways. It's you're breathing naturally, breathing more comfortably, so they should have a better score. What's also interesting with this too is this was done, we did your... 10.31 and 11.44, so yeah, one hour, exactly. 15 minutes later, yeah. Yeah, so in general, when we do the testing that close together, we would see a drop-up in score due to fatigue. Yes, it was really tough to be in there, I, I would yeah. say. So 30-minute test where you're kind of task in the in MRI machine, looking at a, a screen on a mirror. It's not an easy test. A lot of noise in the tube, it's not easy to do. This was to say you have a normal, healthy brain with this of a light relaxator. Yeah. I was using the relaxator, breathing low and slow and rhythmically, and right. that helped to oxygenate my brain efficiently. Yeah, so it was definitely much easier. It, it was functioning much more efficiently, had better blood flow, less energy required to do the tasks that were so challenging. Usually, what we see the first time you do the test when you're more you're the, you're the freshest. We see the most efficient scores. And then if you keep doing it over and over again, it usually drops off due to fatigue and the brain working hard. And then we went one step, step further into the third test, which we usually don't really do three tests in one day because it's so taxing. You did the carbohaler. Yeah, um, so I did the carbohaler for five minutes, for five minutes. before, before. Uh, the third test. Essentially with that, you had the almost exact same score. That 0. was... 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.26, but almost exact same score. So another one hour, 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. Before I did a carbohaler, I felt exhausted. But after the carbohaler, I felt really like my mental clarity increased. It was specifically noticeable while in the chamber, in the MRI that I had more mental clarity, that I was able to focus. Despite being tired, I, I still managed to get to yeah. the same score. And that's the effect we see a lot with carbohydrates, even though with, with it, even though there's, if there's a fatigue building up, it's, there's still the ability to maintain that mental clarity, that focus and endurance too, which is really cool to see in the, in the scan. And then seeing them play out as well. So if we try to summarize, it's just one person and we can't really conclude anything, but just based on, on your uh, yeah. experience. Uh... Based on my experience, my compromised breathing or stressful breathing creates an energy crisis in the brain, similar to that of somebody who has a concussion. So in your brain, when you have your nose plugged and you're breathing through your mouth, only trying to do these tests, yeah. It created a stress state, an energy state where your brain was working similar to how hard somebody was brain may be working if they had, had, had a concussion. Mm -hmm. When you were breathing rhythmically through your relaxator, your brain was high functioning, normal, efficient, good blood flow. With the carbohydrate, when you should have been fatigued and starting to drop off, you were able to maintain that same level of performance. Yeah. It helps you keep that same good blood flow, same good activation, same good efficiency in your brain to complete the tasks without a big drop off, which typically we would see three three consecutive tests that you're able to do your good breathing and the carbohydrate, you're able to maintain the high functioning, clear, focused, efficient working brain. Yeah. And 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 I would say that the score goes hand in hand with my subjective experience that I felt a bit stupid when I had my, my nose plugged and, and my mouth wide open. I also felt a bit uh, stupid and, and thick and it felt easier with the relaxator and easier after the carbohydrate. Just in general, if you look at how blood flow works in the brain, when you're in a stress, high sympathetic state actually will take blood flow out of the frontal lobe, the executive areas of your brain more towards the back, more primal, reflexive, keeping you alive, keeping you safe parts of your brain. I tell my clients this all the time, when you can't think clearly when you're stressed, because there's a not blood flow there. So like what you said, 
matches up with what simply happens where we can't think clearly, can't think straight because there's not blood flow there to help that. So I would tell people a lot of times too that stress literally makes you dumber because there's no fuel for you to think properly and do things as well as you could. Yeah. As we know that CO2 is the main regulator of blood flow and blood volume in the brain. Correct. If we want to be stupid, it's just to open our mouth and start to breathe a little faster and lower the levels of CO2, which will constrict the blood vessels to the brain and the brain will basically shrink. One study confirmed that where they inhaled 5% CO2 for seven minutes, the blood flow increased by 54% to the brain. So I guess that was what we could see here on this score. Yeah, we can see that result in your function. And when the fMRI measures blood flow, all right, and it wasn't like it was over amount of blood flow that came to your brain. It was because we would see that also in your score. If your score actually would go down too, it was too much blood flow. It was the right amount of blood flow, proper functioning for your brain to do the task. We call it efficiency. You had the right amount to do it, not too much, not too little. Yeah. Which is actually more desirable because we don't want to also be flooded with blood flow because that creates pressure and creates headaches. Yeah, it's all about balance. Yeah, and it's interesting to see how it gives your brain the ability to self-correct and adapt and perform at its best. Yeah. yeah. So, so you are Mr. Andy Clover, the neurointegration specialist at Cognitive FX, where you do these uh, brain scans and you have quite an advanced knowledge in the whole team and in all the fancy equipment you are using and, and all the different tools and modalities and exercises in order to help people get out of the constant state of fight flight, which you are in when you have had a concussion or different types of, of brain damages, right? Yes. Constant state of fight or flight, constant state of brain fog, we like you saw on your scan. Overactivation, underactivation, inefficient brain working, which cut leads to fatigue, dizziness, headaches, yeah. fogginess, all the things that people will tend to complain of when they have a concussion can also be experienced when you're under high stress as well. When you're not breathing well long term, you can, you can create yeah. a high stressful state, you can create a similar effect in your brain. And you're not only working with uh, people with health issues, right? You're also working with uh, top athletes in order to help them take their... Correct. Yes. We take these same level. principles to rehab an injured brain to a healthy brain to increase performance and improve performance. My clients are basically baseball pit, pit players. We're, we're working with them for injury rehab that turns into performance training. <laughs> help them perform that, stay focused, yeah. stay healthy. There were quite a few carbohydrates being used last year in the World Series. Um, yeah. <laughs> which was a huge help to the players that were using it pitch almost every single game of the playoff, and they were able to maintain their level of performance and not drop off and had a great postseason. So the the carbohydrate was definitely a great tool for helping in that. So that's a nice tool in, in your toolbox when you're working with the athletes, the, yes. the carbohydrate to help them uh, yes. get the little extra percentage that makes the difference. Uh... It makes a difference in their play. It also makes a difference before our, our training sessions. We'll do a, a five to 10 minute round to help get their brain ready for the upcoming training that we do as well. Too. And that works great. So Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic.